Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode one of Riffle Me This. I am Richard Riffle. And I am Ryan Riffle. And for today's topic, we are going to be discussing the basics of our filmmaking journey. But first, our intro song brought to you by Micah Harris. I really enjoyed that song. Yeah, so did I. So just so you guys know, every time we do an episode, our intro song is going to feature an artist that we've talked to and said, hey, can we play your song? And they obviously say yes. It's not just copyrighted music. Yeah, exactly. And this song that you heard today is called Speed of Light by Micah Aris. So if you want to find him, he is on Spotify. You can type in Micah Aris and we'll also put his link in the description below. Ryan. Let's get into today's topic. So today's topic is about our filmmaking journey. Mm -hmm. And so what I want to do is I'm going to hand it over to Richard. He's just going to discuss the very basic timeline of our filmmaking journey. And then we're going to dive into Facebook and respond to the questions that people asked. So why don't you start us off, kind of just go from where we started and where we are now in a basic 30 seconds to a minute and not a 15 year story. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, not a 15 year story. Yeah. Longer than 15 years. Longer than 15. Yeah, it's what been are we at, like 20, 20 years, years of a filmmaking journey. We, yeah, so we started, yeah, when we were 13, so we're 32. <laughs> I was going to say hard 30, to remember. Let's say 33. We're not 33 yet. So we're almost there. We're almost at the 20 year mark. So 19 years into the filmmaking journey. So yeah, we started in middle school. It was at a church event and, you know, got some friends together, did this little red carpet thing and said, you guys can do films. So we decided to do films. Um, and we fell in love with it. I um, mean, our first film was called Zorro and of course copyrighted after Zorro himself because we love that film for some reason or we, that was the only idea we had. I'm pretty sure that's the only film that our parents allowed us to watch that was <laughs> yeah, action yeah. related. Yeah, that was action related. The They're like, this is PG, so yeah. you guys can watch <laughs> this. And so we did that and then into high school, we made films for friends. Um, we also got out of a lot of speeches by saying, hey, We could do a speech for you or, check this out, or we could make a film. And that was before films were really popular. So it wasn't like a lot of people were like, oh, let's make films. So I'm a teacher now and a lot of classes that aren't film related say, hey, you guys have to make a film for a project. That never happened no, when we were in high no, school. It, so it was, it was very rare, and that was the point. And so they were like, that sounds amazing. Sure, do that. So we didn't have to speak in public, and we could do what we loved. We didn't have to write an essay either. So really, it was an easy A. <laughs> exactly. And, which was good for us because we needed it. <laughs> yeah. So that's high school, and now let's kind of get into college. Okay, yeah. So in college, that's when Ryan and I decided that we could actually do video contests um, in different competitions. So onlinevideocontest.com was a big one and Tongo was a big one and then so we entered some competitions and we ended up winning first place for warner brothers um i can't remember what place we won for doritos and pringles doritos we got second okay and then pringles, pringles we got third and then you won a contest for at and then i won a contest for at&t that was first place the grand total that we won in that whole entire well the first year of our video contest was about forty thousand dollars that's right and then i won another 10 from that one but that was you know years later for at&t yeah and so we never we didn't really continue the competition life um because i, I was starting to go into college and i was really busy in my studies and you know ryan was getting married and so it was hard to keep it going but we realized why we can make money with this and so then throughout the years we developed our own business called riff video productions and now we do it um i mean mostly full-time if you're a video person you know there are seasons yes and over our whole filmmaking journey those about 19 years or so we have made well over 2,000 films i would say counting all the little short films we've done and commercials for people we're probably nearing about 3,000 short films that we've done together as brothers and i know a lot of people are like how is that possible and it's like you would have had to make two or three a week Yes, we did. Ask our parents. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> they, they, We would destroy their house to say, hey, mom and dad, welcome home. Can you guys go in the back bedroom so we can uh, do a video here? So they would go back there for hours, and then we'd knock on the door. All right, we're done. And they'd come out at night, and they're like... And that was their life. But yeah. can, you, can you imagine every video we've made? They were like, wow, that is so good. They lied to us. <laughs> they lied to us. It was, it was probably good at the time because yeah. how we started was terrible, and then everyone got better. So since everyone yeah. gets better, you say, wow, that is good. But now if you look back 19 years, it's – Oh, boy. It's, uh, it's, it's something. We're like, okay, let's run with the camera. 
Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, people have asked us some questions about our filmmaking yes. journey, specifically on Facebook. So let's get to those. And just so you know, we have not read any of these questions, so this will be straight off the cuff. We'll just be talking. Uh, we'll try yeah. not to talk over each other. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but we'll just, let's just dive into it. So this first one is from Craig H. Uh, this, is probably, this is probably a good one to start with. It says, I'd like to hear you address the pros and cons of working with your twin brother. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, he goes on saying, from work, he's worked with us on films. From working with you, it's obvious to me that you guys are, as a whole, more than the sum of the parts. Whatever that means. I'm just going <laughs> to say, I was like, thanks, that Craig. Sounds, sounds like math. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so how we work together. It has changed over the years. Um, when we started out, we fought a lot. We did, and a lot of it was I filmed, I edited, and Richard acted. Um, so, so you had a story and concept in your head, and I had my own in my head. So I would say, Ryan, what about this? And you're like, no, it's a stupid idea. And then we would fight and we'd argue. And see, we eventually told our friends, hey – Ryan and I, we're going to fight, we're going to argue, we're going to say things we don't, you know, know, that we don't mean, but just let it happen. Don't try to go, you guys should stop and be nice to each other. Like, don't do that. Just let us dish it out. And then right. after we're done filming, we're like, ah, cool. Right. And I would say, I mean, I, as I think about it, we have never taken anything off set. So any argument, anything we disagreed with, anytime we got mad at each other, the second we said cut and we left for the day, all of that stayed on the film set and we never took it with us, which I think was really cool, which yeah. is unintentional, but we've never... It's true. I wasn't like later on, Ryan, what you said to me on today on set, yeah. I really hurt my feelings. Yeah. <laughs> we, you know, we hurt each other's feelings all the time. Now, we try to be more considerate when it comes to the other people on set. We don't try to, we don't like explode at them. But, you know, when you're working with a brother or something, it's, it's yeah, a and, different. But that has changed over the years. We really don't argue and fight that much we we kind of i still say things and you're like i don't think i don't like that idea or i say no that idea is kind of stupid too or something but i think we both have a better idea of what we want when it comes to well and now you edit so you're a lot better at the special effects side you edit you had to do filmmaking on your own when you lived in oregon and i was here in arizona so now we both have the better mindset of here's how the film looks to how the edit's going to happen that's true true. so there's not as much fighting within all that yeah because I, I couldn't do much of that then and so you were like this is how it has to be edited right and i didn't understand that fully until i had to do it all myself but like you said now we can both act film and edit so it makes it really nice makes it easier did that um, answer that question fully yeah, what's it like you know working from your twin i mean but it's awesome now i mean it's, yeah i mean it's you know fantastic i wouldn't obviously can't even dream of it any other way it's you know the only reason we were able to make 2,000, 3,000 short films is because I could film and I always had an actor with me. So, Richard, could, we could always go out together and film something. If I was just by myself, it would have been a lot less motivating to go out and film something. I mean, you still can, and we've done things to show that you can do that by yourself, but, you know. Yeah, and, I mean, I think the biggest takeaway is, like, it's a joy to work alongside your brother, and we've loved it. We wouldn't want to do those kind of films with anybody else. Right. Like we love working together on absolutely everything. Even no, we love we love working with other people. Well, yes, yeah. absolutely. We love working with other people too. But like Ryan and I side by side in the filmmaking journey, I wouldn't have it any other way. No, me either. All right. I think it's good for that question. Oh. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. No, that's great. I was just pretending to cry. So Chris R says, I'd like to know who and or what was some of your biggest influences that inspired you to want to start making movies? You know, I think this one for me is a hit and miss. Um, Mm -hmm. A lot of people ask, who is your favorite director? And I always tell people I don't have one. You know, I don't have a favorite director. I don't have a favorite cinematographer. I don't have a favorite anything. I mean, you know, I've always like, like Michael Bay, Explosions. Oh, that's so cool. But I wouldn't be like always my favorite. Yeah, I mean, we we like Steven Spielberg growing up because his films are really unique in the way that he directed. And we were like, that's really cool. But our times of growing up was YouTube because we we started YouTube. I mean, the day YouTube started, I mean, which on, was yeah, fifteen on, on years ago, more than that. Oh, more than that, because I think we have a video on our YouTube channel that's seventeen years ago now. Right, and, and that and was you, close to when YouTube got started. Yeah, yeah, we have to look at that exact date. But but I think even like Freddie W was a bigger inspiration to us because he was doing things that we wanted to accomplish, and we were like, right. wow, that's that's amazing. So we watched like all of his videos and tried to learn from them so youtube was a bigger inspiration Cord- cordial digital and freddie w were our two biggest mm-hmm. f- 
people that we in, inspired to be like. They, they made action films and their cinematography was so amazing. Yeah. We thrived to be like it. We weren't very good at learning from it, I don't feel. You know, no. I, I wish we would have been able to capture everything they did. Um, we we but, just didn't have the same programs and this, the, the same true. engineering mindsets that a lot of them had. Because I mean, you look at Core Digital now and it's like super heavy on visual effects and 3D modeling and all that stuff. And they're just, they're, they're a whole different realm than what we are now. And they, which, and they were a bit older when they got started on YouTube. So they had a little more wisdom and like college degrees in that background and yeah. versus Richard went to school in psychology and I was a college dropout. We didn't really go to school or do any filmmaking school in our life. We've had to learn and just be all self-taught. I, I've never had a favorite movie um, or any. Wow. Should've, I was going to try it. Now you got to do it like this. You got to go. There you go. That was terrible. That's really hard. <coughs> That's really hard to do with the water bottle. It is. I thought it was going to be really easy. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Sorry, viewers. That's not what I meant to do. Um, Influences. Yeah, but I, I don't think we ever had a favorite movie growing up. I mean, the problem is, is I have favorite movies, but I really like The Incredibles. But it's an animation, you know, so I can, like, learn ideas and concepts from it. But I never had a movie growing up that I was like, this is my true inspiration of where things came from. Right. Uh, yeah, I, was, I mean, truly, I think we're just inspired by ourselves. Yeah, I mean, because <laughs> we're uh, so incredible. Next one is from Adam B. He says, it's about time you did a podcast. How would you describe your approach to filmmaking now compared to when you first started? We kind of answered that a little bit in the previous question. Uh, But, I mean, it it was very like high school kids would come over. We would invite friends over to school and go, we don't know what we're doing yet. But we're going to make a film in a couple hours before we have to do homework. And then that was it. And we made a ton of films that way. Versus now, it's like... I mean, sometimes I'm still like that to be yeah. honest, but but we have, we've had, we've made bigger films. That are like we have a script, we hire ba- fifty background extras, we hire sometimes a cinematography team because they have different cameras that we want to use. That way, we can just direct. Now we're going to hire a sound person and an editor, and you know, blah 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 blah. Now we're doing all these things. That's more into like a. It's, it's more film. of an actual production. Yes, you know what what used to be just you and me doing everything, which I would I mean I would say you know for the most part. It's you and me that still does everything. If we do a bigger film, then we kind of we do that whole entire situation. Yeah. But like, you know, a film we made just a week ago, it's still just us doing filming and editing. But we just come at it at a more professional approach. Sure. I mean, that's even like this podcast. Like you, we wish we had a whole team back here helping us with stuff. But we're like, OK, we got a whole bunch of cameras. We got a whole bunch of lights. Oh, no, our batteries aren't working, so we got to charge batteries. Oh, let's go out to the school and grab more lights. Let's do this, and then we can do this, and then we're going to say this and look at this. And, like, everything is still us um, for most of our films. Um, But we enjoy that, don't we? I mean, I think we enjoy— I think we enjoy, for the most part, just being us because we have full creative control. Yes, but I think we do struggle sometimes allowing other people to have— part of that control in the film stuff. I mean, that was really hard in the first big film we did, John Doe, A Western Tale, and having people do the uh, casting call stuff for us. Like, no, no, we want to do that. We want to know. But usually in an actual film set, you would have a casting director. Your main director that's going to run the film isn't too worried about that. He's like, okay, casting director, I trust you. But we're like, no, 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 we want to we want to do it all. And we realized it was, yeah, very- it was really hard to get rid of that rain. All right, so Frank H. says, what is the most satisfying... I'm going to try to say that word again. What is the most satisfying aspect of filmmaking to each of you? Script writing, directing, acting, editing, etc. I think for me, the yeah, most... Yeah, why don't you go first, Ryan? I think for me, <laughs> the most satisfying part is directing. Yeah. I like directing actors, directing people, directing Richard to be like, no, this is... <laughs> don't um, do but directing's always been the most fun for me to pull everything together, tell people what to do. Um, I mean, I would say in life, it's more rare that I just tell people what to do. I mean, I'm a teacher now, so I kind of have to. Yeah. But it just allows me to have that control. Um, I mean, I kind of seen you grow up like that when you like even when you were a manager at a movie theater. You 
started to really enjoy the job when you became a manager, when you had to direct people and tell them where to go, what to do, how to do it. Like, oh, you're, pick, you're losing slack here and here. Let me come alongside you and help you and, and show you how to do it. And as a director, like we said, a lot of times we see a lot of movies in Tucson, um, no offense, but there's a lot of actors that they might be great, but the director just goes, yeah, go for it. And they do something. They're like, yep, yeah, that's great. And we watch it and we go, what was that? But that honestly falls on the director because the director should be going, no, do it like this, do it like this, try it like this, do this. And I, you know, that's where you're good at it and it's been cool to watch. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Um, and then, I mean, I would say second would be f- cinematography. I mean, I like it. I enjoy it. But, you know, you get someone like, I can think of Derek Carlson, who when I watch his cinematography, I'm just like, Phew. He just put out something today, and I was just like, I'm, I'm just amazed. Like, yeah. I just I just don't see how I can get to that level, you know, of cinematography. And, you know, but but I'm I'm good at it. I'm good at filmmaking. Uh, I mean, but, you know, there's always just those people that are going to be yeah. just beyond outstanding. So, man, I don't I don't know for me. I mean, I like I don't know if there's a part that I'm like, wow, I just really want to do this. I think you get stuck editing. <laughs> Oh, I know. My so, goodness. I, that's the thing is I get stuck editing a special effects and then they take a while and then other things come up in the pile and then so it's hard to get to those. And so it's like I enjoy editing for the most part, but recently it's been so much of that that I'm just like – so I mean I, I enjoy the filming aspect I th- too. I think you enjoy acting. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's true. Okay, yeah, you're right. I, I love the acting side of it for sure. I think that's – the most fun for me and that's mostly in my element but like you said it's how, how we grew up you grew up directing and filming and i grew up acting and so even later on in years now that we can both switch and do both things because i've seen you act in things too and it's sometimes i think you're better than me at some of those acting yeah, things right you yeah, stop it you just say no um but <laughs> but you know so i've seen that switch but i still really enjoy the acting side and you still enjoy the directing and filming side but the nice thing about that we have done everything is when we're on set, we can say, hey, try this kind of acting or try this kind of shot. Or maybe like later on when we're thinking about post, maybe we'll think about it like this. So it's been really cool that we have that mindset that we've done everything so we can help the production as a whole. I don't understand anything you just said. <laughs> I'm honest, I, was, I got so lost in everything you were talking about. It sounded like a bunch of jumbled words together. <laughs> I should, I, should I cut that part out? I don't know. You can see how it sounds later. Uh it sounds good though, Richard. Yeah. And Jason Craig uh, says, have you ever filmed weddings? Have you ever forgotten to press record during an important event at a wedding you filmed for someone who still hasn't forgiven or forgotten? <laughs> <laughs> I can't even. Is is he talking about someone in his family? Is he talking about. He's talking about me. He's talking about you? But like, I honestly don't ever remember not pressing record for an event. What I do remember, but this was in Arizona, is we recorded uh, and audio i hate audio it's probably the least favorite of richard and i's existence uh that's why we're lucky that this mic works for both of us um (laughs) but i filmed a wedding where we had recorded and it was recording the bride and groom and they were trying to light candles behind them and it took them about 45 minutes to light these candles behind them and so the audio died before they could even say their vows and but you know it's like hi, is that our fault? You know it's not really because we're it should have been a lot. It should have been from twelve to twelve thirty, not twelve to two. You know yeah. so. But I don't honestly like I said you can put this in or not. But I don't remember ever a time not press and record during a wedding, especially one that Jason remembers fifteen years later. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we both did something with Jason. I remember we went to like Astoria or. It was one of those places. I've done a lot of ways with Jason, so I mean. Yeah, I guess I only really did one on that golf course, you know, and like being a second camera shooter. Best gig ever. You film for the day, you hand him the SD card, and you go, bye. It's the best. But I mean, (laughs) I would say, listen, after the 3,000 films we've done, uh, that one has completely left my memory. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of films that we've done where we've maybe forgotten to press record. I mean, my biggest thing is when I fly my drones. I get all this amazing shots and I'm like, this was so beautiful. I bring it back to me. I press my GoPro to hit stop and it starts recording. And I go, (gasps) and then I realize I have to literally go replicate the whole thing all over again. And so that happens more on these cameras than I think our main ones. Our main ones, very rarely have I hit it and then it starts turning red. And I'm like, oh, I wasn't recording that whole time. Uh, 
Yeah, good one. Well, this one was posted 18 minutes ago. 18 so minutes while ago. we're doing this. Wow. Here's mine. What kind of microphone setup do you have and what would you recommend for someone just setting up? We don't. I mean, this microphone is a blue <laughs> microphone. <laughs> like I said, Ryan and I with with audio stuff. I mean, we we've learned road mics and live mics and stuff. But man, we're like, wow, this mic, it can capture both of us with one audio thing that I can sync later. Great. I mean, you got this one for um, the school initially. Um, yeah, I don't know if you remember anything about this mic, though. No, what? No, yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> I don't know anything about this mic. Um, it's a black. Um, it has knobs on it. The it has title four, is blue. Yeah, it has four different settings. Um, so it can capture this way. Everything just on your side, just on my side. Um, I didn't even know that. Yeah, I, cool. I, I only know that because I'm looking at the buttons right here on the back of the microphone. <laughs> uh, but was that all the questions? Yeah, that's all the ones I had. Someone cool. said they liked Riffle Me This, Riffle Me That. I just think Riffle Me This, Riffle Me That is too long of a title. Yeah. Riffle Me This is a good title, but the other one is just... Yeah, it could be riffle me this and then a tagline riffle and me riffle that. me that. Or Not riffle, and, you just or say, just say riffle me that. that or something like that. But, I mean, that's great. Well, this, is, this has been great, Ryan. This has been great. Been great this, to talk this, to is, this has been really fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> yeah, and so hopefully you guys enjoy um, learning about our filming life, just kind of the brief synopsis of it. Um, and that you've learned something and you like our answers to our questions. You know, we try our best, but we're also, like we said, we're shooting off the cuff. We didn't practice this like a regular film where you memorize a script. We're not doing that with these podcasts. We're trying to be as real and genuine as possible. I would say for the next, you know, future episodes we do, tell us what you guys want to hear from us. What would inspire you? What would you like to learn uh, would you like to see different filmmaking guests on this with us? Um, it's only really a two mic setup. We, unless we have a third person here with somehow we it rig could, a camera yeah. somewhere else. But, you know, maybe it would just be one of us uh, talking with a guest person. Yeah, because like you said before we started the podcast, you're like in future episodes, we need to do something where it's bringing value to the people that are watching, that it's not just they're listening to us ramble on about our lives. It brings value and information to them. So we're not quite sure what that means yet, what that entails. Um, so if you guys have ideas of things you would want to learn or know or that would bring you value and some meaning. Uh, to your life. To your life. Uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you for finishing that sentence You're for welcome. me, Ryan. I really appreciate that. Hey, so we're going to end the episode by uh, playing a little bit more of Speed of Light by Micah Aris. Um, guys, check him out. It's really fun. Um, he is. He makes some really cool music. Um, there's actually some Screamo songs in there, too. Uh, I don't know if you're a big Screamo fan. Um, I know we... No. aren't <laughs> but sorry my god yeah we're but, just, we're not, but, but some of his songs that are i've actually really enjoyed because the lyrics are good mm. and the way that they do it is good um and they even do some behind the scenes of their like screaming stuff and i'm like i don't know how you do that with your voice that seems impossible yeah. to me but anyway beside the point uh check out his stuff again on instagram micah Harris on instagram as well um but on spotify and the links below um and stay tuned for future episodes Thank you so much for watching. I am Ryan Riffle. And I am Richard Riffle. And this is Riffle Me This.